Pinning in Affinity Publisher allows you to anchor objects to a specific point within a text frame, creating a link between the text and the object. Often used in conjunction with linked text frames to anchor illustrations to related text in novels, pinning gives you a greater sense of security when editing, assuring that your text and illustrations will continue to be linked to the relevant sections. For example, I have here a travel guide that I've been working on, the copy for which has been provided to me in a single written document. I've then imported the text into a series of linked frames. Because the text frames are linked, any changes I make to an earlier frame, such as adding or deleting copy, will directly affect the text in the frames below. With this approach, text and images can easily be separated if they're left stationary on a page. Pinning will help to avoid this issue. As an example, I want to add an illustration to the start of this chapter. So to begin, we'll place the file by going to File and choosing Place. I'll then locate the image and click Open. We'll then use the mouse to place the new image. Next, we'll pin the image to the chapter title. To do this, we'll need to access the pinning panel. So I'll go to Window, scroll down to Text, and choose Pinning. The pinning panel has two options we can choose from, Float or Inline. The Float option will create an anchor or pin inside the text frame, tethering the object to a specific point or reference, whilst allowing us to float the object to somewhere close by whereas inline will create a pin directly in line with a line of text. With this option, the image effectively becomes a character within the text frame. We can insert spaces before and after the image, or even delete it by pressing backspace. I can adjust the pin's position by using the move tool, selecting the image, and then simply click dragging it, moving the pin to a new location. We can define the scale of the object by using the Scale 2 drop down on the pinning panel. We could choose to scale the image according to the height of the title's letters, using Cap Height for the full letter height, or instead X Height, which calculates the height of the font using the medium line. For this example, I'll choose Point Size, which will initially use the title's font size as a starting point. We could then reduce or increase the scaling percentage by adjusting the Scale option. We'll choose to reduce this to about 80%. With the lantern now a similar size to the text, we can adjust the offset, increasing the lantern's position until it aligns nicely alongside our title. The Preserve Manual Scale option allows you to alter the scale of the image manually using the Move tool in addition to the options on the pinning panel. By deselecting this option, it will lock the image scaling in place. It can then only be updated by using the options on the pinning panel. With the lantern's position and pin location in place, I can then continue to make changes to my text, safe in the knowledge that the lantern and chapter title will remain in tandem. So I'll go to my document and find my additional copy, copy the paragraph, paste it above the title, and then change the text style to body. The inline option can be slightly restrictive limiting the object's position to a single line of text. We could instead choose the Float option. This allows us to create a pin, tethering the object or image to a specific place in our text frame, giving us more freedom to float the object to a nearby position. For example, we have this illustration of this lantern here, and again I want to reference this image to the subtitle Festival Origin. So using the Move tool, and the image being selected, we'll choose the Floating option, but this time, from the pinning options on our toolbar. This will create a new anchor within my text, tethering the image in place. I'll move the anchor to the start of the subtitle. I can also move the image freely, selecting it and adjusting its position. I'll position the image here, and then I'll choose to add a text wrap to the image. We'll choose Tight for the text wrap style, and then evenly adjust the spacing around the lantern. Rather than moving the image manually, we could instead use the options on the pinning panel to reposition the image. We could change the horizontal alignment offset to 55mm and the vertical alignment offset to 12. Additionally, we have the option to constrain the image to the bounds of the frame, both vertically and horizontally. Though useful, it's worth pointing out that clicking this option may limit the effectiveness of the alignment options. 
Finally, we can add some additional copy above the Festival Origin section. So I'll go to my document, copy this last paragraph, and paste the copy above the Festival Origin section. Finally, I'll apply the textile 02 body. And there we go. We can see that the lantern illustration has moved alongside the pin, filtering down to the following page. And that's how to use the pinning panel to pin objects to text using the float and inline options. Thank you for watching.